Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. We are talking about micro boutique wineries here today. We, we did a whole day of tasting in the Valley de Guadalupe here in Baja, California, and our theme of the whole day was tasting at very small produ producers. And when I talk about micro production, I'm talking about where you have producers in front of us that are making less than 5,000 bottles per year. Uh, this lady right here producing less than 10,000 bottles a year. Not very high production whatsoever. You know, what's kind of cool here in Mexico is the relative ease of sourcing grapes. So there's a lot of producers that are actually making their wine in other people's facilities. Maybe they don't have the money yet to build a big winery, but yet they still can have their own label, you know. So makes for a really interesting situation. Let's get to tasting some of the wines today, okay? Let's cut, make this short and sweet. <laughs> you want the Malvasio? Yeah, I sure want some Malvasio. Let's start off with um, this producer, Sol y Barro. My Spanish is ter uh, terrible. This is his uh, actually signature wine, Grenache Cabernet Sauvignon from 2013. Um, we, this is already done. This was his signature wine. Uh, first of all, interesting guy, a, an ex-Swiss, or he's still Swiss, but a Swiss ex-engineer living in Guadalupe Valley because his cousin also makes wine here, uh, Mogor Bada, and we did a video on her earlier. But he built his entire winery by hand, literally. And what I mean by hand, literally. Uh, his whole winery, his house is built out of cob architecture. And what that is is just topsoil, ground soil, water, and straw. Basically, just mud dried and then sawed off basically to make a shape. Uh, interesting guy, built all his fermentation equipment, uses these cute plastic cubes. Uh, he designed a water cooling system around it too, it was interesting. The Grenache Cabernet Sauvignon, basically the best way I could put it, it was fruit forward, accessible enough for most people without a ton of wood influence, yet there's enough nuances and complexity to ple appease a lot of different or more seasoned tasters. I mean, I had this at 4.1. Let's get into the wine we are actually tasting today. And this is the wine that's uh, quite unique in the valley. This is the Sol E. Bardo Malvoisi from 2015. This is 100% Malvasia, which is very rare here in the valley. Uh, the label here says Pinot Gris, and I asked him why he put Pinot Gris on it. He said, I don't know, so maybe people could maybe understand what the grape was, but there's no Pinot Gris in it. Um, maybe he, he said he needs to take that off. But anyways, we just got back from Istria, Croatia, where uh, Istria and Malvasia is huge there, producing some excellent white, some excellent white wines. Wines that Shireen is very, very near and dear to Shireen's heart. So let's go ahead and taste uh, this bad boy right here. First of all, we see the nice, I think his wines are unfiltered uh, because we did definitely, they're a little, it's a little bit cloudy. Yeah, did you see some bubbles in it? Yeah, a little bit of frizzante action. Let's give this a little bit of a nose now. Now, now so they say for white wines, Gewurztraminer gives off the most distinct characteristics. I think dry white Malvasia is up there too. I mean, it really, I smell dandelion, yellow flower, maybe a tiny bit of lychee, just yeah, a tiny bit of little lychee. Yeah, it's confusing, but you do it, it's really lychee. A little bit of sliced pear for me, just a little bit, but the dandelion and yellow flower really what stand out to me. Let's give this a little bit of a taste. Shireen's been excited mm -hmm. to try this wine. Mm. First of all, mm, really nice mouthfeel. Um, incredibly nice mouth, not mouthfeel. Hold on. I get a lot of yellow flower in the front. Really ripe, like a red peach, like not the orange peach, not the white peaches, more red peach. Not red peach, the ones that are that have a lot of Just color. Ripe that have ripe yeah. peach yeah. flavor. Yeah. Um, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of citrus. It's extremely floral. And Malvasia, especially the drier ones, 
maybe in the Italian, Northeast Italian ones, the Istrian ones, they provide this like bitterness in the sides of your mouth and it's not tannic, it's not for, like the same astringency you get from dry red wine. It's just a little bit bit, just a touch of bitterness. Yeah. Nice wine, I think uh, I have this about 4.1, 4.2, it's really nice and crisp. Nice acidity. Has enough body to go with uh, some bigger foods besides just the, like the simple white wine fish pairings. It's full body, it's it's full full body, body white. Wine, yeah. Great work. Great work from Aimee from Soli Bottom. Let's move on. Um, We're not going to open this wine. I just want to show it. This is a lady who used to work in Hollywood for many years. She actually was on uh, one of the production teams that did the famous film Batman Forever. Uh, in, in addition to other films, she moved down here to Mexico, bought a little piece of property, grows some of her own grapes, and she loves to tango. So her actual winery is called Vin Tango. This is the Zinfandel 2013. She won awards with this when she first started making wine, and now she has all an estate Nebbiolo because her Nebbiolo vines needed to mature. She also makes probably our second favorite ne Mexican Nebbioli, Nebbiolo in the valley, excuse me. What I like about her Zinfandel is number one, for some reason there's not a lot of Zinfandel grapes here in the valley. Uh, there should be, I think it's perfect weather, just like in California Zinfandel does excellent, but for some reason there's not a lot here. And the Zinfandel here take on, they're a lot less jammy than they are in California. Uh, I love her wines because this one in particular has red fruit but also has some dirt, some earth, some forest floor kind of notes, a little bit of mushroom vegetal action going on, but still has enough fruit to cover all that up. Anything you want to add on her wine, Shireen? Uh, awesome lady. Her winery is built into a cave, like I said, less than 5,000 bottles a year. If you end up in Mexico, you have to make an appointment with her. Uh, that's basically how it is. I'm really, really big fan. We will probably open this eventually. Lastly, the small microproducer we have. We have the Valley Girl Wines Soul Sister from 2013. This is 100% Cinso. Interesting story behind this lady. She is from Arizona, was living in South America, doing some work for Wild Chile, Argentina. She also knows how to tango. She is American. Uh, and we met her while we were helping harvesting for another winery because she was coming to pick up some of her grapes. She makes about 10,000 bottles a year. Really cool. Her little property, she basically uh, bought a trailer, moved it here into the valley, built stuff around it, built up a little tasting room, a little bodega. Her winery's not up and running yet, but she's making wineries in different, uh, different various other people's facilities. This uh, she designed to make more of like a rosé red style. I have to admit, Shireen didn't want to visit her at first because she doesn't like the whole pink color. <laughs> but Shireen came around and actually acknowledged that, you know what, I admire her for trying something new and she's making very accessible wines. Very accessible. Mm -hmm. This is 100% Sinso. Uh, it should be chilled. We have this uh, bad boy a little bit chilled. Uh, I like it. I think her wines are fun. You can see her branding, not non, not pretentious at all. The color, let's see if we get the color in here. Uh, almost a little bit red-brown, but it has a lot of clarity to it. This is just straight-up fun wine, right? I mean, um, it's not easy for most countries to get a hundred percent Sinso wine, so it's a must try and I would say this tastes better than a lot of the Sinso's that we've tasted. Yeah, I, 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 it's got really nice strawberry, sour cherry notes, just a touch of vanilla. I think she does put this in a barrel for a little bit of time. Anything else? Um, it's typical of Sinso grape, but there's also a little bit of that pink, pink smell on the nose. But it's not a wine for us. It comes natural from. Yeah, Cinso. exactly right. It's one of the characteristics we get from Cinso is like this paint. Yeah. Uh, it's not offensive. It's maybe like I would I would relate it to you walk into a newly painted room maybe, mm -hmm. and you pick up some of the fumes. Not not real strong. Let's give this a go. A lot of actually a lot of strawberry, raspberry, uh, lighter cherry notes coming out of the nose for me. Mm -hmm. 
Got some sweet red fruit in the front. Maybe a touch. Hold on a second. Is it a touch of vegetables in the mid palate? Uh, I would call it vegetable, but there's some green herbs too. Maybe more like green herbs. Yeah, a little bit of green herbs in the mid palate. Uh, slides down the throat, still has a decent end palate. It's well made. It's basically, for me, it's a heavier rosé. Heavier rosé, light red wine. Uh, got nice flavors. I think Cinso should do well here in uh, Baja California, but you don't see a lot of it per se. Actually, I think he gave her wine about 3.6, 3.7. I think it's, it's a fun, fruity... Nice summer day wine. So great show with the micro producers. Uh, that's the cool thing about going to those wine regions. I think we're finally actually starting to really figure out Mexico from all the small producers, all the boutique wineries. There's a couple of big wineries. There's several different styles of wine going on. There's actually counterintuitively some excellent white wines being made here as well. So anything you want to add on top of these producers? Sure. Yeah, I agree. There, you taste a lot of decent white wine, but there are a lot of outstanding white wine. I mean, uh, we won't go into other producers, but like this Malvasia, it's a simple, full body, but it has a lot of wet stone and mineral taste. Yeah, the this yeah. the I didn't add that in my tasting note. The Malvasia has a lot of mineral flavors in it. There's some excellent stuff being made here. We still have a little bit more time to go here. We're going to be producing a lot more videos. If you like this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you at the next episode.